So the bash startup files, um, you may have come across these before. Um, there's generally a system profile in ETC profile and then each user has their own custom profile, which um, I think off the top of my head can call the standard one and then override anything that's set in the bash profile for each user. It explains what each one does, bash logout and so on. So then this note here, most instructions below used to create files located in the ETC directory, stru the directory structure which requires you execute the commands as a root user. If you'd like to create the files in the user's home directories instead, you should run the commands as an unprivileged user. So here's the first one, ETC profile. This file starts by setting up some helper functions and some basic parameters. It spe specifies some bash history parameters uh, and for security purposes disables keeping a permanent history file for the root users. So that means when we log out, the history gets deleted and we won't be able to recall. Uh, that might be a problem for you initially, but it is certainly something to bear in mind uh, that it is a security issue if you do retain commands for the root user somebody who has access to the root user or to the directory could look at the history and see what commands have been done as the root they may involve passwords that have been entered on the command line things like that or locations of various resources so uh, yeah you might want to consider whether to uh, uh, disallow that or allow that depending on your preference and if you want to allow it the bit you want to disable is this bit here I think it's that command there you want to either comment that out or or remove it completely so we need to copy and paste this so let's go back to our uh, terminal with the browser and what I should do, I'll just skip to this section, I'll go up and up again and we want to go to, we're in the bash, bash startup files so that's this section here, let's go to the next page and there, this is where we start copying with the correct mouse. So let's copy all of that. Move back to our input console and uh, right click it. Go to the next page with space. Left click and drag again. It's the input, right click. Page for next space. Uh, space for next page, sorry. And we'll copy all of this down to the EOF directory. Go back again, right click to paste in, it's finished. Now I'm just going to go to a terminal here that I've got that's hidden from you just to see what changes I've got because I can never remember them. And I'll just copy them across and explain what they are. Right, I don't think there's anything in this one, but let me just get it up in fire. So you can see it's copied in OK. Um, now it looks like there's no additional changes here. Oh, the only thing I have done is I've done a wire. I've remarked these out, so I'll leave them in for the moment. Um, but it looks like I may need to. I can't remember why I've done this now. Maybe I've set the prompt somewhere else. That might be what it is. So, what I should do, I shall remove these. No, I won't. I'll leave it as is because these scripts do change. I'll leave them as they are for the moment, but I'll have to bear in mind that in the profile, might want to edit them. 
so that looks okay so let's go on now it says to create a profile.d directory where individual initialization scripts are placed so let's go back to our screen and copy this command so we can paste it in as I say you see I've gone past the line here it's taken up the whole line what will happen when I paste this in is that it will do the command straight away because it's copied the end of line character and you might not normally want that because you might want to read that you're putting in the right command for you actually physically press enter yourself so that's something to bear in mind so then we've got a bash completion script it says it's controversial because it increases the bash side and if you're used to looking at the uh, using the set command to see what environment variables you are uh, you've got set uh, it will interfere with it because it produces a lot of output so this may be optional for you depending on your preference I'm going to stick it in because I don't normally look at variables that often so we'll go to the next page and start copying this script from here and pasting it in next page back again to the input and that's finished we can examine that one with fire get some nice highlighting it's easier to read profile.d Bash completion, see how that looks fine. And then we've got to make a directory for the bash completion. So we need to copy this bit here. Right, this goes behind, so I'm just going to get that out of the way so I can see exactly what I'm copying. right click press enter that's created that for more complete installation see bash shell startup files so I think that's further down on this page I believe oh no it's uh, like a wiki with looks of it so that might be an option to install that so I'm going to leave the I think this is to allow bash to complete for other packages so I'm going to make a note of this one okay so this is something that's obviously not in the manual the looks of it but it's something that can be downloaded and installed their recommendation and that's on the wiki so I'll leave that there to remind me to install that when we we got going a little bit more um, let me just check it's not in the book I don't think it is No, it's not, which is why it's in the wiki, obviously. Okay, so now we've got a the colors.sh it controls colors of the names of files in directory listing. So let's go back to our terminal. and copy the script in paste it let's quickly view that one make sure it looks all right yeah that looks fine you can see the commands here ls and grep so this functionality here gives these the color that they don't normally uh, get
Um, right, next one, extra paths. So it's add some useful paths, add some useful paths to the path and can be used to customize other path related variables, e.g. LD library paths, etc. that may be needed for all users. So let's go and add that one in. So this one's split over the screen. Okay, and we'll now look at that. Ah, oh, right, okay, that's why the screen went a bit funny before and confused me. It's because it's such a huge command that's been typed in. Uh, extra paths. Yeah, that looks okay. So now we've got one called read line. This script sets up the default input RC configuration file. If the user does not have the individual settings, it uses the global file. So that's a good thing to have. Uh, one mouse again. Call the previous one. It looks okay. So you can see it's a simple script saying if none of these files exist, then use the default system one. Uh, you mask. Yeah, it's default. Uh, permissions for system users when the username and the group name are not the same. So again, it's an important one. Once again, let's check that. Okay, looks good to me. Now we've got one for internationalization. And you can see we're expected to put in the language modifier. So we need to modify it to make it the same as the one that we've got currently set. And this effectively changes the location of this setting. So we'll copy all of this, paste it in, and then again modify it. Might need to check it to actually see it. Uh, I18. So we need to modify this. So I'm going to go into another terminal, Alt F3. Uh, go in as root again. And try, well, there you go, straight away we've got the prompts turned red. So these, uh, this profile is working straight away. And you can also see uh, this one that we're modifying. It doesn't like the the data that's in there, it's it, it's saying it's illegal, the language, what's been, um, the, the specification, it's, it's the chevrons, it doesn't like the less than sign. So you can see straight away the etc profile is working and the etc profile.d directory is working, but because of the profile script, it's running straight away. So that's a good sign. So, right, the thing I wanted to do here was to um, view the current setting. So I've got to find out where it is. I can't remember which uh, configuration file it's in. Um, right, I'll have to do what it says in the book and go to the LFS page. Okay. Oh, right, we've overwritten it. <laughs> okay, we've overwritten it because we've specified a new profile um, script. So what I should do is that's worth looking at before you overwrite it then in that case. Uh, I shall go to my machine I'm cribbing off for settings. And take the details from there.
Right, okay, so... Uh, I don't need this terminal anymore. I can go back to my input one. So I need to set mine to en underscore gb dot iso 8851 so yours may be something similar in us it'll be us underscore us i think dot iso 8591 um, but yeah it's uh maybe i should have read that before went ahead and overwrote it so that's that one done other initialization values so now oh let's save this so now we've got bash rc um, and there are some changes in this file that we'll be adding to the default so let's go back to the browser the text browser and start copying this with the right mouse and paste this one in Oh, I've got the EOF bit. Okay. So the changes I've got here. <clears throat> Are to do with the shell, if you like. Um, we'll just see what changes are different here. There's quite a few changes I've made on the reference one. I'm going to see what this does, and I may make the same modifications, I may not, I don't know yet. Okay, right, the changes I'm going to make first are all about the, well, mostly about the bash prompt. Um, now, the first one, it makes the bash append rather than overwrite the history file. So if you've got two terminals open, what will happen is the last one is the one that will have the history retained. All the other ones that you close prior to the last one will have the history forgotten about. So this option allows you to keep all the history in all terminals. It will, it will um, be kept for all terminals. So I'll just put a comment in. Bank bash append rather than overwrite the history file and it's an option, a shell option for bash. And I believe there's other options if you want to investigate uh, the other options, other options to set. The next custom setting I use is a custom one that also affects the history. And what it does, it writes the command that you have entered into the history file immediately. So normally the history file gets written when you close the session down. This option writes to the history uh, files immediately. So this time it's uh, like an environment variable. And you need the quotes around it because there's a space there. The 
the next one is about logging out of the shell and it's yeah, it confuses me sometimes because I'm at terminal that hasn't got this option. It normally causes me problems. I normally log out completely if I've done an SU or sudo or something. Um, but generally, it's a good thing because you might accidentally press Control D when you didn't mean to log out. This forces you to actually press Control D twice to, to prove that you really did need to to log out. So this command is export ignore EOF equals one. Um, now, if you're using C flags and CXX flags, this is where normally I would put them. Uh, I'm going to put them in, but I'm going to leave them blank because I'm not going to use them. Not for this demonstration. I don't want to risk anything going wrong unnecessarily. Uh, if I was building a system that I was intending to use, I'd probably try and set some of them. Um, but uh, not in this case. Uh, it's too risky. If you don't know what you're doing, it's too risky because things can go wrong. And that's it. That's it for now. Anyway, I may make some more modifications depending, uh, and it, it will be to the prompt if, if I do make any modif more modifications. But that's enough for now. Obviously, these changes won't happen until I re log in, so I might do that now actually. I'm going to do Control D, you can see it logged out straight away. If I log in as root, I've got that colored prompt. If I do Control D now, oh, it hasn't worked. Why is that? It's probably because we need some more scripting to read this bash RC file. That's probably what it is. Uh, so, okay. The profile gets read automatically by bash, but this doesn't. It probably only reads the local ones. So we'll carry on. and It will, it will get activated. Um, it's just not being activated at the moment. There's probably more scripts to come. And it could even be this one here. That does it. So this is a base dot bash profile. So this is the one for individual users, and this is what I'm going to put in um, for the scale file. So let's copy that from here. Obviously, I'm the root user. This is going to be created for the root user. Because that's what the script is doing at the moment. So if I do ls-la, you can see the bash profile file is there that's been created. So I now need to copy that into... the etc oops, uh, profile into the etc scale directory and I'll have to modify the permissions on that when uh, we finish with that because at the moment it's readable by everybody and as it suggested you might not want to do that uh, okay, next one's a profile So basically this will be run again on logon. So let's copy this one. And it looks like you can actually set up the lang variable there. It's rimmed out at the moment, remarked out. Uh, so that implies that the default uh, will be taken from the ETC profile. Um, I 
Yeah. Now we've got a dot bash our oh, I need to copy that actually, don't I? Dot profile to etc scale. So I've got bash RC. And again this is a default one. And you can see what it does here, it uses the system one as part of its initialization. And again we've got another place where the language can be set. So it seems like there's they haven't quite made their mind up where to set it. Uh, right, this one here. Too far. Okay, and we'll copy that to the ETC scale as well. So this is for when the user logs out. Um, just check my reference. Yeah, I haven't got anything in there. I wondered if I did. I haven't. But we'll copy it anyway so it's there if uh, you want to add anything in it for all users. that into ETC skill as well. If you want to use the dirt colors capability and run the following command. So this will allow the um, contents of a directory to be color coded depending on the file type. So this is worth running this command here. I'll just type this in, it'll be quicker. Dir colors minus p forward slash etc forward slash dir colors. Oh, right, okay. I've got the chevron. Didn't check it. There you go. So I'm going to log out again now, see if this looks like it's the end of the configuration more or less. So root, root, okay. Let's do control D. Yeah, now it's asking me to tell me, or telling me to use log out to leave the shell. So if I really did need to log out, I'll do control D again and it's worked. Um, if I did control D, and I didn't want to, if I, just by pressing any other button, say backspace and control, oh, it has worked. It needs to be a printable character, I think. Uh, root, root. So I do control D. Uh, see, control D doesn't work. It's got to be done twice in a row for it to work. So now we've got some changes we can make to the VMRC uh, profile, the configuration, sorry. So I'm just going to check that because I have made changes to this. Just preference changes. You might not want to do these changes yourself. It's up to you if you want to do them. Um, So if you remember, we've already got a VMRC, which was set during Linux from scratch. Now, uh, it, it looks like um, what they've got here is just slightly expanded, but they haven't got they haven't included the stuff that's in uh, the Linux from scratch book. Um, 
So really, if you want to set these options, you want to put them in addition to what's already here. And um, I'm not sure if I've added this myself, you know, that one there. I can't remember what that's for now. Um, but certainly the... No, I don't think I have. Uh, the set ruler is one that you want to turn on. Um, it's a useful one that shows you what column and what line you're on. Um, the other ones I find a bit of a pain if I'm copying and pasting, so I don't tend to use them, but you can if you want to. Um, you know, And you can obviously read the book to find out what other options there are that you, can, that you want to set. So I'll save that. Um, if I now do well, recall that command, you'll see I've now got a column and line option here, which gives you a little bit more information as to what line and column the cursor is on. Um, and I suppose optionally we could copy that to the ETC scale as it says here give the user the default that the system's got that they can modify it as they want. So let's do that. But we'll call it dot fim rc as it says in the book. It says here what it does. So again, columns 80. Well, if you've got a wider terminal, say you've expanded it full screen, you're going to have more columns. So that could be a pain. It won't automatically fit. Uh, and the rep margin, it reduces it by number eight. And yeah, I, I just find they get a bit in the way for me, but you might, you might want them. Customize your logon with ETC issue. Uh, it's not any specific information here. It gives you some idea that you can clear the screen uh, at logon. Um, now, this can be a good security thing. It could be a bit of a pain if you want to see what the last messages were when you booted the machine. So it's up to you if you want, want to use it or not. I'll show you what to do, how to create it. Um, So as it says here, if you type the command clear and then pipe it into issue, you'll generate the um, entity codes to clear the screen at the first logon. So, um, oh yeah, I can't <laughs> I keep thinking I'll copy that. So I'll type this in clear and put that into etc issue. It's not there. So now if I log out, you see the screen's been cleared after I've logged out. I've got a fresh screen. It hasn't kept what was there. If I log back in again and delete that file. And now if I log off again, you see it hasn't cleared the screen. It's kept what was on the screen before. So you can see how it can be a, a good security device to clear the screen when you've logged off so that none of what you've done on the previous screen is there nor even the scroll back I'm doing shift page up and the scroll backs disappeared as well so it's probably worth doing um, I'm I'm going to create it but I'm not going to activate it because uh, it might get in the way of me demonstrating things to you. I might want to recall something or go back and check something so I'm not going to turn it on at the moment. I'm going to create it but I'm going to actually hide it. You can see there's the characters there so I'm just going to put oops, a remark in there. I'm not sure how this will work actually. 
Right, it's still it's still doing it actually. Right, it's probably because these characters do equate to something, so I can't remark it out, so I'll just get rid of it. But other things you can put in there are things, as it suggests here, you can put various details in. Some can be quite interesting. I'll just stick them in to show you what you can do with them. So you, every time it encounters one of these special characters that's escaped by a backslash, it will insert the information that that character or that escape code represents. And lastly, we can do something flash like this is backslash n, which is the host name, dot backslash o, which is the um, domain, brackets, backslash s, which is the system, the machine, and the kernel reference, and backslash t for the time. So now if I log off, you'll see we get all this information coming up when we log off. And the, the same will be when we log on next time. I'm not sure if it does it here now. No, it won't do that there. Uh, so what I should do is I'll show you that if I quit here, reboot the machine, you'll see it as it happens right from scratch. It'll make more sense rather than me trying to explain it. Not probably not a useful thing to have if you're um, you've only got only one machine, but if you've got several machine you manage several machines you're managing, you can see it's come up straight away before the login prompt, so it gives you a good idea uh, what what terminal you're sitting at. Uh, if you have got several machines and maybe you're accessing them remotely, uh, it'll give you that sort of feedback. Um, and also, if you remember the clear option where it clears the prompt, um, everything from here upwards would have, would have been cleared, so we wouldn't be able to see these messages. You'd see all this stuff um, and the login prompt, but you wouldn't see any of these kernel messages. And, and the back scroll, it seems to have cleared as well. So you wouldn't be able to scroll back like I am at the moment. So I would say not not particularly useful, but maybe if you've got several machines, you can check specifically that the time's right and date's right, what system you're on, the teletype you're on. You can see it's TT1. If I go to TT2, you can see it says TT, TTY2, teletype 2, the virtual terminal 2. The host name domain name that's not been set, kernel version, there's no users currently logged in, well as soon as I log in here, if I log in at another terminal, 
and log off again. You can see it says there's currently one user logged in. That's because I'm there's one user logged in on Terminal 1, TTY1. And then the kernel built details and the, and the time. And lastly, there's this little message that we created. This is Canatex PC, no domain name, the Linux name, and the version number and the current time. Just an example of how you can mix them on the line. In fact, I might even add a space between that last line and the next line. It's a little bit crowded there. Yeah, that's better. 